Hello everybody this is Dr Medicine Arix and in today's video we'll be learning about Dyer's disease also known as dyskeratosis folliculis so it is a autosomal dominant disorder where the gene defect lies in the ATP2A2 gene which is located on the chromosome 12 this ATP2A2 gene is required for coding a specialized pump called as a SRCA2 or the sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum calcium pump that is required for transporting this calcium ion actively from cytosol to endoplasmic reticulum so this SRCA2 pump belongs to the atps family therefore it utilizes atp that is energy for transporting this calcium the major isoform in epidermis and other tissues of this SRCA2 is SRCA2 b and therefore as a result of this defective atp to a2 function the type of pump that is affected is SRCA2 b pump so following atp to a2 mutation there is defective protein expression such as that of the cytokeratins and defective transport of desmosomal proteins to cell membrane therefore desmosomes are not formed leading to acantholysis so these desmosomes are necessary for keeping two keratinocytes together so when their function is lost obviously the cells are no longer going to adhere to each other leading to acantholysis as a result of this reduction in SRCA2 b function there is loss of calcium ion homeostasis and there is impaired synthesis and folding of cell adhesion proteins leading to apoptosis and acantholysis coming to epidemiology both males and females are equally affected so the age of onset can be anywhere between the 6 to 20 years of age and it peaks at puberty the onset is usually insidious and gradually progressive and since this is an autosomal dominant disorder a family history is obviously going to be present coming to clinical key features so the earliest lesions are seen behind ears and later they involve other seborrheic areas such as the scalp the face uh, so the back and also the fr front trunk and the primary dermatological lesion that we will be seeing is a papule sometimes these papules may coalesce to form plaques as well and the characteristic lesions in dyer's disease are multiple dirty warty papular excrescences and they are symmetrically present and they involve face limbs and trunk most importantly they affect the chest and the upper back coming to how these lesions progress so they start as small firm skin colored papules which later get covered with a dark dirty looking greasy crust and when this crust is removed a small pit like depression can be seen so papules coalesce to form large plaques which are malodorous and appear as papillomatous growths over body flexures such as axillae groins and gluteal creases scalp is also involved in the form of greasy crusts and hair loss may not be present gutted leucoderma which is a rare variant is characterized by the presence of numerous depigmented spotty macules hands and feet are commonly involved so there are obviously going to be papules which are closely set and uh, they appear as generalized horny thickenings and obviously there is going to be pits on the palms and soles and uh, numerous pin point to pin head sized spots over hypothenar eminence can also be seen there is this variant called as acrokeratosis verruciformis where veruci veruca means that it looks like a wart and acro means it involves the acral areas so flat wart like papules on dorsal aspects of extremities is what you call this acrokeratosis verruciformis this is also another variant and can also be commonly seen coming to nails so nails often show earliest change there can be thinning of the nail plate there can be subangular keratosis increased fragility of the nail splintering triangular nicking of free edges and candy cane nails where alternating white and pink bands can be seen and these are pathognomonic of dyer's disease coming to oral involvement there can be crusting fissuring and lip ulceration white cobblestone like papules can be seen on palate and tongue coming to the changes in eye hyperkeratotic plaques seborrheic debris at eyelid margins and chronic blepharitis can occur coming to the exacerbating factors heat sweat humidity sunlight ultraviolet exposure lithium oral corticosteroids mechanical trauma and premenstrual flares are all responsible Dyer's disease can improve in the winter season. Coming to some clinical subtypes, acral hemorrhagic segmental variants type 1 and 
acrokeratosis verruciformis of hoof erosive or bullous form and vegetative form rare forms include conifying form on legs comedon like lesions hyperpigmented macules and papules coming to histopathological examination so this is a dyskeratosis follicularis lesion so obviously there is going to be dyskeratosis and since there is loss of desmosomes there is going to be acantholysis there is compact hyperkeratosis acanthosis papillomatosis and uh, acantholysis which is supra basal that is involves uh, the uh, cell layers above the stratum basal uh, this acantholysis is irregular and it can be seen at all levels in the epidermis and there is supra basal cleft formation so dyskeratosis means faulty and premature keratinization of individual keratinocytes so two types of dyskeratotic cells can be seen these include corons and grains so these are both types of cells seen in the epidermis so corons they mimic owl's eyes and the nucleus is deeply basophilic and pycnotic with a perinuclear halo and the cytoplasm is deeply eosinophilic and it is present at periphery of the cell so in the picture below there is very thin deeply eosinophilic cytoplasm present at the periphery so obviously this is my sketch uh, and in the center there is a deeply basophilic nucleus coming to grains these are dense eosinophilic spindle shaped cells with small elongated nucleus and they are found in the stratum corneum on electron microscopy there is loss of desmosomes there can be breakdown of desmosome keratin uh, sorry uh, intermediate filaments attachment and uh, perinuclear aggregate of keratin intermediate filaments coming to grading there is four grades starting from 0 to 3 so the first uh, sorry the zero grade uh, is the subclinical severity where there are asymptomatic lesions and sometimes there can be acrokeratosis or even nail changes because nail changes are the earliest changes to occur in uh, darier's disease then coming to grade 1 mild severity localized keratotic papules 10% area involvement with pruritus and mild irritation grade 2 moderate severity extensive papular lesions involving about 10 to 30% of the body area and uh, crusted lesions with uh, secondary infection can be seen grade 3 severe type where there is widespread confluent lesions involving about more than 30% of the body surface area coming to management general measures such as wearing lightweight clothes using sunscreens to avoid uh, sweating or any maceration or mold odor antimicrobial cleansers and keratinolytic uh, emollients to avoid any uh super added bacterial infections topical management so topical corticosteroids are not much useful as monotherapy singly so they are to be combined with topical keratolytics so topical keratolytic uh, agents are mainly the topical retinoids so we can use this for localized lesions these include ad adapalene and tazarotin topical 5 fluorouracil topical tacrolimus uh tacrolimus has been particularly found useful for extensive diseases another keratinolytic agent such as salicylic acid and sulfur can be tried coming to systemic therapy oral vitamin a in high doses such as the 50000 international units per um, uh three times a day can be tried vitamin a in combination with e has also been found useful oral retinoids are useful for extensive disease and the oral retinoids commonly that are used for darius disease are acetretin and isotretinoin we can also go for etretinate so acetretin in a dosage of 25 to 30 mg per day for 2 to 4 weeks uh, should be started initially and later on it can be increased to 60 mg for 8 weeks whereas isotretinoin can be started at 0.5 mg per kg per day and can be increased maximum to 4 mg per kg per day for 16 weeks so while the patient is on retinoids careful monitoring is necessary and the dosage is to be reduced progressively and it should be maintained at low dose in order to avoid relapse or the dosage can be completely stopped cyclosporine has also been found effective for severe flares oral and topical antibiotics can be used as prophylaxis or if there is any bacterial superinfection oral acyclovir in cases of any herpes simplex virus infections 
and surgical management for hypertrophic lesions in the form of derm abrasion uriac laser co2 laser for excision and surgical excision with grafting can be tried thank you subscribe for more